people. I finished a book. The Ruin of Cash. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, cash is... The Ruin of Cash is, is like a... Uh, it's like a North African folk story. One of the better parts of this book, the North African folk story. It lasted for maybe... Uh, maybe 20 pages. This was actually a terrible book. I don't know why I bought this. 356 pages. I've had this book in my possession for, I don't know, it could be as long as 15 years. There's been four episodes of me reading this book. The beginning of the book, which I hardly even recall, was not that bad. I picked it up again around page 170 and I, I finished it. Uh, I plowed through it. Uh, this is philosophy, which is not something that I normally read. And uh, the center of this book, maybe for a good 125 pages, was the author's attempt to connect uh, sacrifice to everything. And then maybe another 50 pages of the author's attempt to uh, connect repetition to everything. Uh, it's a used book. I bought it at King Book. I still have the bookmark that was in this when I bought it. Whoever this was, they... They scribbled so small that it's illegible. They also underlined some sentences in the book and, and, and scribbled little notes in the margins that I also couldn't read. But that stopped at about page 200. I don't think this person here finished this book. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure whether the people that wrote these blurbs on the back of the book finished it or not. Uh, right in the beginning of the book, it has a, a portrait of Talleyrand. The portrait of Talleyrand that we've all seen, where he's very smug-looking, uh, the limping devil, Talleyrand. And maybe this was when I was in my Talleyrand phase, I don't know. Uh, not that I'm finished reading about Talleyrand, I do have some notes in here, and, and they're pretty brutal. I did not like this book. I don't know, I have this thing about finishing books, and I have a giant pile of half-finished books, and I picked this one off of there three, four days ago, and I said, it's time, I'm going to finish this book. Uh... <laughs> One of these notes here says, if I can finish this book, I can finish any book. And this author, I'm, I'm going to end up reading a couple of paragraphs. But the author talks about Sigmund Freud. And uh, I've never read any Freud, but he has the nerve to accuse Freud of tortuous prose. And... Uh, Freud must really have had some torturous prose for this guy to accuse him of that. Because I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs here, and you're going to see what I mean. Uh, this note here says I wanted to find the most ridiculous paragraph in this book, but really I could have just picked any page and read any paragraph, because they're all bad. Let me see if I can get through this one here. The commensurability of, it's like a check mark with a two underneath it, Simon Wheel speaks of this as the drama of the incommensurables. But she goes, oh, it must be Simone, not Simon. But she goes on to say that the scandal of this discovery, far from being a defeat for the Pythagoreans, as is naively thought, is their most marvelous triumph. She uses the image of a scale that has on one dish two cubes of side one, and on the other a cube whose side is equal to the diagonal of the other two cubes. Under these conditions, 
equilibrium can never be attained. No amount of weight added or removed will ever make it possible. You know, I, I just, I, I don't want to have to struggle to understand single paragraphs. My note here says, this paragraph is, is so meaningless to me that it would appear to define obscurity. And if there is no meaning, then there is no knowledge. A little philosophy from me there. There are two kinds of substitution. One says, one says A stands for B and implies that A annuls B, kills it, sometimes to discover how it works. The other likewise says A stands for B, but in the way that a chip of granite stands for the mountain from which it has been detached. Between these two kinds of substitution there is a bifurcation, a Y that had long roamed the cosmos but is now concentrated in the mind's core. The symbol, not the one that linguists speak of, but the one we find in the Eleusian mysteries, belongs to the second kind of substitution. The symbol keeps superimposing itself on an invisible mountain. The fact that it is a discontinuous wrinkle always turned towards the continuous is revealed in the origin of its name. Symbolon means the broken halves of a piece of wood or pottery, which come together to reconstitute a smooth and solid surface, barely incised by a transverse wound. More than teaching substitution to which it must still pay homage, the symbol teaches inter interpenetration, the inevitable layering of things. The symbol is a ghost that enters another ghost, mingles, dissolves there, escapes. It drags behind itself in a golden chain everything it has passed through. And that's just, you know, on one page. He can tell I really love this book. Okay, there's another paragraph. And these are the names that are in this paragraph. John Stuart Mill, Judge Schreiber, Bentham, Woodworth, Byron, I actually happen to know who that is, Goethe, I know who that is too, and I'm pronouncing it correctly, and Chateaubriand, and I, I sort of know who that is. But there's a thousand paragraphs like that in this book where, you know, he mentions 10, 20 names. <laughs> My note here says, I'm sure... Finishing this book makes me a part of a very small group of people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just made a note here. You know, a lot of these philosophers were in the 1800s, in the 19th century. And there was a lot of interesting shit going on at that time. And he doesn't mention any of it. Okay. One of these blurbs on the back, you know, goes on and on about how this book is about Talleyrand. Finally, on page 310, we get to Talleyrand. And, and he even manages to make Talleyrand boring. Okay, here's a quote by Andre Platonov, or Platonov, I, I don't know. Uh, Talking to yourself is an art. Conversing with others is a pastime. I like that. Not that I'm going to go find Platonov's book or anything, but I like that. Uh, and these are, I just marked this page because it was a couple of uh, readable paragraphs. They actually told a little story, something you could understand. I'm not going to read them, though. Oh, talking about the, the person that read this book before me with his little scribblings. On page, th page 345, I have a pizza stain. And that's it. The only other mark I put in here was at the very back. I, I date things. I date when I finish them. I've got so many books that I actually look at them sometimes and, and wonder whether I finished that book or not. And to celebrate finishing that book, uh, my son bought me a six-pack of this beer. 
Hogarten. I'm sure that that D is pronounced as a T. Uh, like any good smoker, I open my bottles of beer with a big lighter. Kind of a dual purpose tool for me. I like it. This is a wheat beer. I like it. Ah, thanks for watching.